Broadcasting from the east lot of Jones C. Edwards Stadium, the Thundercast is here with all the sights and sounds of game day. We are your pregame and tailgate destination. We are your fan base amplification. We are the Thundercast, and we are live. What is up, Herd Universe? It is the very first episode of Thundercast Live. We are broadcasting live from the lot of Huntington Physical Therapy. I am KD Hudnall. This is my longtime buddy, brother, and co-host, Russ Livingood. Welcome to Thundercast Live. This is our way of bringing Herd Game Day into your living room and getting you just that little bit closer to Marshall Athletics. Russ, we got a ton, a ton on the dock today. What about a crazy night last night? We're going to talk about it a lot more later. Yep. But knocking off number two pit down at the vet, big time soccer game. Men's soccer team put on a show last night, hard fought win over number two in the country pit. Uh, some social media sites called it stunning. Of course, I replied that it's not that stunning. We were already the better team. That's right. We just had to play the game. But what a way to kick off the weekend. It's home, not homecoming, uh, Hall of Fame weekend. Here at Marshall, we got Norfolk State visiting. I mean, it's just, it's freaking football season, baby. Yeah. Who, who, if you're not a Herd fan and you're not pumped for this, how are you not pumped for this, I guess I should say. And how long does it feel like it's been? To me, it feels like it's been about two years since that final whistle blowed at the end of last season. And the culmination of everything that has gone on, not just for Marshall football, not just for you fans, but for everything that we have been doing. We've been telling you that we're going to have a live tailgate experience. Look behind us. Look at the crowd shot back here while people are just starting to get going, but we've got two smokers. We've got uh, a professional sound system with a few TVs. Uh, I think I saw three TVs total here on the line. <laughs> They've got a setup back there, man. It's an awesome setup. So if you're in the area, please swing by and see us. I don't think you're going to be disappointed. I mean, absolutely. Come by and say what's up. Uh, talk heard football with us. Uh, we've got koozies that we've been talking about. We've got tons of stickers. Come by and get some swag while they last. While they last. Uh, we've been out here bright and early getting set up for this. I mean, we were out here before basically anybody but the guys cooking behind us were here. Um, and I got to mention, we couldn't do any of this without Ignite Link. They're, oh, my they're powering goodness. the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, just so thankful to be partnered with guys, the guys from Ignite Link. They're making this all happen. Uh, just so that we can to, can bring the game day experience into your living room. So later on, we're going to talk about what's going on here at the tailgate. We're going to get you up close and personal with the food. We're going to talk with uh, Mountain State Farm, who's provided all the food, the tailgate sponsor today. We're going to get Dan in here and, and uh, let you learn a, bit, a little bit more about what they do. Um, and, of course, we're going to get into the game, right? We're going to get into the game. But before we get into the game or maybe – interspersed in there we're going to take you back to the guys that are cooking at the smoker and just show you a little bit of the magic that they're doing there talk to them a little bit as well uh i'm telling you folks we tailgate we tailgate big well i mean it's just time you talked yeah. about it a little bit ago how long does it feel since that final whistle from the bowl game and what all has gone on i mean now right. new conference i mean hell we were still in the conference usa at that time last year yeah. That got fast-tracked. I mean, some of the other stuff we've talked about, baseball stadiums finally in the works. Uh, we, okay, let's, 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 let's just talk about what all happened last night across college football, right? Just, just between the old Conference USA and, uh, you know, our buddies up, in, up at Old Dominion pulling off a huge win against Virginia Tech. Markets over programs, am I right? That's right. That, that was the tweet. <laughs> that was the tweet. Uh, it. You love to see it, right? We we have uh, some people that maybe are hesitant about, oh, I don't know, the Sun Belt. And you think about what the Sun Belt was maybe 10 years ago, seven years ago, five years ago. The Sun Belt, and in particular this East Division that we are in, is going to be a tough mountain to climb. And we're going to talk a lot more about the Sun Belt, a lot more about this Marshall program and today's game here in a little bit. I think it's one of these uh, situations to where both sides are excited. Like yes. the Sun Belt's excited yes. to have Marshall. They Marshall's are. really excited to be in the Sun Belt. 
there have been so many articles and uh, you know videos and things out uh, talking about how the Sun Belt has embraced what we all love about college football, which is basically the fan. You can you can sum it up by saying they they have prioritized the fan. You get your regional rivalries back. You get games that you can travel to in a day. Yeah. I mean, it's what we've needed for a long time. Conference USA was the fit for Marshall at that time in 2005, but slowly but surely. It didn't become such a good fit anymore. And let's uh, let's expand on that a little bit and talk about something that we talked a couple of episodes ago when we were talking about expected numbers of attendance here. Mm-hmm. They travel. They you know, do. App State is going to bring some people here. When JMU plays us here next year, I guarantee you they're going to bring more than those Western teams that we were playing out there, the your uh, UTEPs and right. the North Texas and UTSA. Think about the regional footprint that we're in right now and the easy games to go to, not only for us, but those fans that are coming here, spending money in our town, spending money at our stadium. It's only helping everything uh, onward and upward with the Sun Belt. Onward and upward. And speaking of games, like if today's game, it's the season opener. There's a lot of hype around it. There's a certain vibe in Huntington on game day. Yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm 880 miles away in Florida, and whenever I get to come back to a Marshall game day, it's, it's soul-cleansing, man. I mean, there's just something about a Marshall game day, all the Kelly green flowing around the town, flags are flying, smokers are smoking, beers are getting cracked, people are laughing, tossing the football, we're talking about how we're going to look this year, uh, everything that goes into it, man, it's just soul-cleansing, and I'm so glad that I could make it here for the opener, so glad that I could be here to do Thundercast live the very first right one. here. The, the first very one. first one. Got to have both of us live. We for could the first not one. be more excited to That's do right. this. So look, if you're on the fence, whether eh, I don't know if I want to come to the game or not. Look, it's going to be a beautiful day today. Uh, the lots are starting to fill up. People are starting to creep in. I mean, hey, we were even out fairly late at a different event last night. And we kind of uh, packed it in a little early because we wanted to be ready for this. Yeah. But there were plenty of people still out when we left. So we, we figured the, the lots would be a little slower to fill up, but they're packing up. The west lot is filling in. The east lot's filling in. All the auxiliary lots are filling up. So if you're on the fence, man, I don't know if I want to go to the game. Hop in the car. Come to the game. Yeah, it's, it's just a little under five hours till kick. Uh, you know, find a tailgate. I happen to know one. It's right here. You know, if you want to come in now, Huntington Physical Therapy, if you park on this lot, they are charging up there. Just know that. We want to... Uh, let you know before you come but there are plenty of places around here to park that are close so that you can walk over here and hit our tailgate up if you're already over at the stadium we want you to come over here you know like katie said come and get some swag we've got some while it lasts to hand out and check out what's behind us look at all this over here you know with, with the sound system and the smokers and everything that we have, uh, there's an RV right behind us here, too, and they have a TV. That was the third one that I was telling you about. Uh, I mean, we're talking tailgating, folks. We're, we're not picking up some pizzas and, and eating them in the back seat of our car. This is real tailgating. Good thing you didn't say hot dogs because yeah. I think Kyle would have come running up here yeah. and, and – uh, I'm going to, when we talk uh, at the smoker later, we'll introduce you to Kyle, and we're going to ask Kyle – how to make hot dogs because that's just going to set him <laughs> off. <laughs> Look, if you if you do decide to come over to our tailgate and say what's up, which we which we encourage you to do, you're going to smell the food long before you see this tailgate. It smells amazing back there where those smokers are. The yard birds that are on the smoker, the uh, the briskets, and what else is there back there? Burn ins, pulled oh, man. pork. Uh, the burn ins just now went on, uh, and you know the yard birds have been on for a little while. They've already been pulling some pork butts off for you know quite a while and having them resting and everything again this is not the first time these guys have ever tried to do this uh, <laughs> no you know, they uh, are professionals as a matter this. of fact it's 10 30 ish going on 11 o'clock in the morning on saturday these guys have been cooking since 3 30 yesterday afternoon yeah i mean you're going to talk you're talking about fall off the bone food i am purposefully starving myself this morning to get to gorge on this great food. And we're also going to have uh, smoked mac and cheese and uh, baked beans as well uh, for sides. And we're going to apologize in advance. At some point, we're going to be eating on camera because (laughs) 
we as soon as it's ready and the plate is brought to us, we're going to show you just how good that is. <laughs> so let's talk about the format for the show, right? Yeah. We're live now. We're going to we're going to go for you know, roughly 20, 25 minutes. We wanted to get this thing kicked off, but uh, you know, we want to tailgate too. This is the opener. We've got friends here. We've got people that we want to see and say hi to. So how this is going to work is we've got several camera feeds. And even when Russ and I aren't live on camera talking and doing a segment, there's going to be a, a, a constant shot of the tailgate. So you'll see a countdown clock and, and, uh, and, a, and an overhead shot of the tailgate so you don't have to navigate away from the channel. And you'll know exactly when that next segment is going to start. And we'll do that three or four times maybe today, maybe yeah. three segments, maybe four. Uh, we're hoping to have a guest or two pop over and uh, get some folks on camera. And, uh, again, everything we're trying to do is to bring that game day experience into your living room. If, if you're like me uh, and live hours and hours, hundreds of miles away, and you just can't make it, we want you to get the vibe of the opener, the Sunbelt era opener here in Huntington. It's gonna be awesome. When everybody packs this place out, uh, that sea of Kelly Green, is it's unmatched, yeah. right? It's unmatched. Yeah. It looks really good on TV, it pops. Uh, I, I am so excited for the game. I can't wait to get over there. The stadium, uh, we didn't talk about that, had a little bit of a, a facelift as well. Uh, we've got the wraps on the exterior. It just makes it look great when you're walking up and when you're driving by. We're uh, we're in a new era with new everything. Yeah. Everything is just new. It's like I mean, new athletic director, new conference, new wraps on the stadium, uh, new seating. Because as we have talked quite a bit, you know, we're moving everyone back where we used to be, is sideline to sideline. Uh, the atmosphere today, I feel like, even for what some folks are a little down on uh, is a uh, an FCS team. You know, uh, they might want to see a P5 program come in. It's not very often that that's going to happen. But even so, I know just by driving by and looking that people are so pumped for this game. And it's going to be a great atmosphere over there. It's the opener, baby. Yeah. I mean, how many times I got to say it? It's freaking football season. That's what people want. That's what we love. I mean, look, we love Marshall Athletics. Every team that we put on a field or a court, we're out there to root them on. But football is the lifeblood of this athletic department. It is, yes. We all know it. I yeah. mean, we all grew up on herd football. Yeah. And I've said it before, this start of this Sunbelt era feels very much like going home again. Uh, the return to the stadium seating, these classic rivalries that we saw in, in, in Marshall's FCS era. Uh, the championship winning teams of that era. We're hoping to see that again. And for all the folks that are like, well, it's Norfolk State. So what? I don't go to see who we're playing. We're I go to, to see, see the herd. herd. Yeah, right? that's exactly and right. This is a game that we'll get to know what the identity of this team is to a certain degree. We mentioned it in our week one preview. It's a, it's a lot of news, a lot of firsts, right? Mm -hmm. First uh, game for Henry Columbia as QB1. First game for Kalon LeBourne as RB1 um, as we continue to pay attention to the, uh, I don't know if it's a recovery, the issue surrounding um, Rasheen Ali. We'll right. see how long he's out. But there's a lot of questions that are going into this first game, and we're hoping to just come out of it healthy with a convincing win and some of those questions being answered. And some knowledge uh, for the team on, you know, the makeup of the offensive line, maybe some schemes, some uh, positions. Do you want to go three wide? Do you want to go double tight in? You know, different things that we're going to get some good looks at. The coaches will kind of have a, you know, because it's Norfolk State and we're not trying to bash them, but it gives them an opportunity to test some things out yep. that you cannot have forward to do at Notre Dame. Right. So this is going to be a really get get where we need to be prep for Notre Dame that's coming up next week. And let's talk real quick. You mentioned on the week one preview – we actually recorded that right before the depth chart came out. Yes. So there have been a couple of uh, additions or moves that uh, were a little surprising to us that we would have covered in the, uh, in the preview, but we didn't have that information. And when I say surprising, I, it's just uh, it was unexpected for me particularly that uh, the uh, wide receiver that is in uh, the – I don't. It's not slot. He's on the outside. Uh, Charles Montgomery. Mm -hmm. uh, he won a starting role. 
Yeah. And I, that only tells you if he's doing that, he was doing everything that he needed to be doing in practice, impressing everybody. So I'm looking for a big game out of him today. I agree. I mean, he was a guy that we talked about in the spring, that we talked about in the recruiting class, but it, it's it wasn't a, a case where – he, his name was just thrown out a lot. We weren't right. seeing it a lot in the practice yeah. reports. We weren't seeing it a lot in in uh, post-game videos and stuff like that, or post-practice videos. And then to say, wow, okay, uh, landing on the starting spot on the two deep to supplant some of the guys, some of the names that yeah. we had already seen on the roster that performed at a high level last year was surprising. So um, don't call me cautiously optimistic. Call me optimistic about – uh, what I thought was a strong wide receiver room anyway, yeah. if you got guys like that that are making waves early, I mean, dang, sky's really the limit here, right? Yeah, if you're starting over Shadid Ahmed and starting over Brian Robinson, you had to have been impressive in those uh, practices leading up to this. So, again, uh, I'm looking for a big game out of him. I'm going to be watching that uh, pretty intently at that position. Yeah, we'll get into more of these positions in the roster and the depth chart a little bit later on in, in another segment. Uh, but for now, uh, thank you so much for, for logging in and, and clicking that link and joining Thundercast Live. Uh, we we want to be with you all day long. We want you with us all day long as we uh, debut this bad boy because i got to be honest with you, it's been a long time since KD's had butterflies in his stomach. <laughs> but uh, I had some today because I wanted to do the absolute best job that I could for our listeners and our followers, our fan base, and everybody that couldn't make it to a game, I felt responsible for making you feel like you yeah. were sitting here at HPT with us. So thanks again for Ignite Link for powering this whole thing. We're going to get you in touch with the guys that are cooking the food, the guys, uh, Dan from Mountain State Farm, that provided all this food. I mean, this is a great opportunity for herd fans to enjoy game day from their living room. But if you're close, if you're within a couple hours of Huntington, Get your butt in the car and get down here. There are still tickets available, uh, but I, I imagine there won't be too many by the time it's about time for that starting whistle to blow. Yeah, I, I expect uh, when this weather, it's a little overcast right now. It's not going to be raining during the game. Uh, when the sun pops out, uh, the weather today is going to be beautiful. Yep. I feel like there will be a very good vibe that will get a walk-up crowd. Um, so if you're one of those people that are on the fence, like KD mentioned, come by come by the tailgate walk down to the game you're not going to be disappointed and one more time let's look at this behind us you know from the overhead we have two smokers we have an rv we have three tvs and a professional sound system people are filing in we've got swag to give you <laughs> this is just a great destination for you today come by come by and say what's up i mean that's what it's all about um We'll see you in about 45 minutes. We're going to go see, say hi to some of our friends. We're going to tailgate a little bit because we're fans. We want to tailgate. This is our game day, too. So we'll see you guys in about 45 minutes with our next segment. Appreciate you guys for clicking the link. Hang around, watch the tailgate, and we'll see you in a little bit. It's the Thundercast, and we are live. Welcome back to Thundercast Live. We have got a lot of more people that have been filing in, as you can see behind us. Uh, it's starting to pick up, hopefully all the way around the stadium. Uh, we walked around a little bit and saw some people filing in. Over here at our place, we still have the sound system going. We have a lot of stuff on the smoker. I got to try just a little bit of yard bird uh, during the break. And who made all that possible and brought this food is here with us. This is Dan Given of Mountain State Farm. Dan, yeah. welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. Tell us a little bit about Mountain State Farm, where we were able to say, I need this, 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 and this, and you made it happen. Yeah, well, absolutely. You know, I think Mountain State Farm is unique in a couple different ways. And that is, first of all, it's here in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. For also, I just got to throw it out there. I went to Marshall University. I graduated from absolutely. Marshall University, yes. so I'm a herd fan. And now I have my own herd of bison, yeah. and we raise chickens, and we raise pork, yeah. hogs, you know. And it's all pasture raised. There's no confinement, so it's humanely raised. And uh, we, you know, we've gotten into this meat business. You can check it out at mountainstatefarm.com. You can follow us at Mountain State Farm on all handles, Instagram, YouTube, everything, and see what we're up to. And we're really about transparency and delivering a high quality product in a humane way to 
West Virginia and particularly our folks down here in Huntington. So, and I've seen great. that I was uh, uh, given a tour by you of the property up there. It's yeah. a massive farm, and humane is definitely uh, every one of the uh, bison have a name, and they are cared <laughs> for. Uh, it's just it's it's great with the operation that they have, and I'm telling you, when you see the food here in a little bit, and we're going to be eating on camera, <laughs> you're going to see. <laughs> how good this stuff really is yeah and they've done an excellent job I, I sampled a little bit too it tastes great but you know our farm is something that's been in the family for a long time recently though in the last several years we've taken back over operations and we just have a ton of work still to do but it's coming along nicely and we want everyone just to see what we're doing and what we're up to and uh we're glad to uh kind of sponsor this inaugural tailgate yeah. for the thundercast and we're excited too I tell you, the biggest thing for me was like, we came to you and we said, Dan, we want to do this. Here's what we need. And you basically went, no problem. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't like, well, let me see if we can get some things together. I don't know if we can make it. It was no problem. We got you covered. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. No, I, I mean, obviously we've known each other and I saw that you were interested in some sponsors. And I was like, this is a perfect fit. Yeah. I mean, we've got bison. We've got herd on, the, you know, our own herd on the farm. You know, they're going to be you know, doing what I love, which is smoking meats. Yeah. Who doesn't love that? Yeah. And uh, tailgating. Yeah. I mean, I've had my fair share down here at Huntington <laughs> doing that. So Wait, can you ever to... get your fair share? <laughs> no. Because no, I cannot. No. I cannot. <laughs> Probably not. No, that's a good point. Now let's talk uh, briefly about, uh, you know, you said go to mountainstatefarm.com yeah. and they could actually, uh, anyone watching this, get an order from there yeah. and you could ship it to them, correct? Well, we are getting ready to ship here in the next month, Okay. but we are in the Wild Ramp, which is here yes. in Huntington. We've got a limited selection down there, uh, but we also are at the Putnam County Farmer's Market, which is, I don't know, it's not even 40 minutes not from even, here. Yeah. Every Saturday through October, we're down there with a full selection of products. And we're also even up in Buchanan, West Virginia. And we have our own meat shop on the farm, which is a little bit north of Charleston, off exit 46, off I-79. We are getting ready to ship soon. So hopefully it'll be as simple as going on to mountainstatefarm.com, placing your order, and letting it show up at your door. So what I'm hearing is you need to go to mountainstatefarm.com, bookmark the site, so that when that program rolls out, you can start outfitting your tailgates <laughs> yes. with premium meats from West Virginia, a West yeah. Virginia grown farm from a herd alum and a herd yeah. fan. Yeah. I Absolutely. mean, that's, that's what we're all about, right? That's At right. The, Support the herd fans. Yep. Yeah, that's what the Thundercast has always wanted to do. We want to work with her, other herd fans, and it's uh, a rising tide raises all ships. You yeah. Know, so we we want to network together. Absolutely. So you're here for a football game. Yes. We've talked about the food. We've talked about <laughs> what you do. But at the end of the day, we're here to watch the herd play. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about who is Dan given excited to see on the field this year? Who's the guy that's like, you know what? I'm really intrigued. Well, you know, I mean, I'd be lying if I didn't say that I'm interested in seeing how Columbia plays. I mean, he's the quarterback here at Marshall. We have a history of great quarterbacks. We're absolutely. talking Byron Leftwich, Chad Pennington, the Randy Moss years. I mean, that's what actually sold me when I was a kid growing up watching those players play. And so I really want to make sure and see how Columbia plays. I have high expectations for him coming as a transfer from Texas Tech. I think it's going to be great. And others, you know, just the overall atmosphere here in Huntington, I've noticed has changed because I have been so busy with the farm. I haven't yeah. been down here that much, I have to admit. And it just seems like everything is growing up for yeah. the herd. And I think the Coach Huff years are in, Brad Smith years are in, and I'm excited to see as it progresses where that goes. We were talking about that before we went live. We were looking around like, wow, this, this building used to be here and this building used to be here. And now it's looks like what I said before, we're on the precipice of a Absolutely. an emergence, I think, as a city, a real um, industry boom. Mm -hmm. You know, we're trying to bring everything into, well, I mean, let's face it, the 21st century, right? It's, yeah. Huntington is on the verge. It really feels that way. Not just outside of Marshall, the city in itself. It's, Absolutely. I mean, I was just joking. I was like, when did Dunkin' Donuts and another Starbucks? And now, like, <laughs> there's this shake place. I was like, when did all this stuff come to be? And apparently I'm a little bit behind on that. But just looking around, you can tell there's been Big things coming, you know, with the baseball field and other things and event and uh, venues being put in. It's it's really exciting. To me, it sure. looks like leadership of Marshall and of 
Huntington are on the same page about what they want to do. We recently had, as we can see over here, the old ACF property uh, in the not too far distance. There was just a big announcement about that uh, that will heavily impact this area and Marshall University. It was in the Herald Dispatch just two days ago, if that. So it's like everyone's on the same page. Uh, it's a very exciting time. We just talked about in segment one how everything is new, and this is part of it. Huntington is getting some of that as well. But back to football. Back to football. Back to football in this game. Uh, you said Columbia. I have to echo that because everyone wants to see the default de facto leader of the team, which is usually the quarterback, right? Uh, so this is his first snap that he's ever going to take in a herd uniform. Uh, we are all wanting to see with anticipation how's he going to perform. Uh, if I had to get Dan Given to give me a prediction right now on what Columbia is going to do today, uh, against Norfolk State, what do, what would you say? Put you on the spot. Well, you know, coming from Texas Tech, you and knowing how Texas Tech is, I'm hoping he's going to air the ball out some. We love to see that. You do love to see that <laughs> now, especially here at Marshall. Yep. Marshall yes. uh, but you know, at the same time, uh, we've got good backs, and I think it should be a balanced approach. And um, but. I'd love to see some big deep throws. I mean, yeah. who would I be kidding if I KD. didn't? Well, he's got a good problem, right? The wide receiver room we talked about yeah. before yeah. is absolutely stacked when you think about guys like Corey Gamage, Talib Keaton, Shadita Mid, uh, Montgomery, and uh, Brian Robinson. Not that, and we are, we're not even talking about tight ends. Yeah, I mean, the, and runners out of the backfield. And runners out of yeah. the back, mm -hmm. or receivers out receivers of the backfield. Receivers out of the backfield. Yeah. He's got a myriad of weapons. So the point I keep making is – is Norfolk State's third, fourth, fifth, fifth cornerback better than our third, fourth, fifth wide receiver? No, actually, I mean, no shade at them. Their number one corner is not better than our number one wide receiver. Yeah. yeah. So we could see it get ugly early. Yeah. And I'm which kinda, I predicted. I'm kind of here for it. <laughs> I predicted. Uh, I said 56-14. Yeah. Uh, so I'm looking at 42, which uh, if you're a betting person, that is against the or with the spread. Uh, I think that uh, it opened around 33 and a half. Uh, heavily favored Marshall. The ESPN predictor had him at 99.3. We're looking at we could be airing it out in this first Columbia game. I'm not saying that Dan should bet the farm, <laughs> but 33-point spread, you got to like the herd's chances today. Would you bet the farm? Uh, that's all really <laughs> tough, but if we're speaking um, uh, metaphorically, why not? I think a 33-and-a-half-point spread seems reasonable to me based off you know, the, some of the analysis you've done on your podcast, it seems to me that that's something very achievable for the herd. Today. If, if we're doing metaphorically, I'll put $28 <laughs> million on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I like the herd to win. Yeah. I, I'm not a betting man, but yeah. it's yeah. always fun to speculate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dan, look, you're here to tailgate. You're here to have a good time. We appreciate you joining the show, yeah. talking about Mountain State Absolutely. Farm. And we really, really appreciate you providing the food for this tailgate. I mean, there's going to be a lot of satisfied tummies here in a little bit when that stuff Absolutely. gets pulled off the smokers. Yeah, and look at this back here as more people are showing up and everything and, and tailgating and all that stuff. It's just great to see. But, Dan, thanks yeah. again. Well, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it, guys. And, yeah. We'll catch I'm up in excited. a little bit. I'm excited for everything you're doing on this show, so it's great. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate you. Uh, Dan Given, guys, go to mountainstatefarm.com, bookmark the site. Get ready to place those orders. They're going to be shipping soon. Follow them on Facebook, Instagram, so you get the whole uh, experience from Mountain State Farm. Go to the YouTube channel. He says they're doing a series of videos of things that go on on the farm. So you'll get a firsthand look at the herd that he has on the farm. But look, we got to bring somebody in who's been the man behind the curtain who's making this all happen today. That's our buddy Jed from Ignite Link. Jed, get your butt over here. Let the people see what you look like. Tell them about Ignite Link. Let's talk yeah, herd absolutely. football. I mean, yeah, yeah. You, this setup is all being powered by Ignite yeah. Link. We're so blessed to have them as a partner and as a sponsor. Um, Jed, tell them about Ignite Link. Let's talk some herd football. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Ignite Link, uh, I started Ignite Link about five years ago. Um, I saw a need, I felt, in the area for uh, managed IT services for small to medium-sized businesses. Uh, so that's who we target. We target me uh, small, medium-sized businesses. We uh, 
Uh, we take care of your network from your PCs to your servers to your network to your cybersecurity and everything in between. You just think of me as your IT consultant. A lot of times, guys, you know, it's, you know, uh, small, medium sized businesses either don't have somebody or if they do have somebody, it's just one person. So what we yeah. do is we provide you a team of people. It's not okay. just me, it's not just somebody else. It is a team of people that work with you and your organization to make sure that you're secure, um, you're protected, and everything's backed up. I mean, ultimately at the end of the day, your business needs to run. And if your business is not operational, if your IT at your business is not operational, you know, that's, that's lost money, that's, that's lost revenue. That's right. And that's, um, you know, you don't want to pay people to sit there, you know, <laughs> and stare at a blank screen. So that's what, that's what we're there to provide. Um, so we're, you know, like uh, we mentioned, um, we're Huntington based, right here, yeah. right here downtown. Our office is right down on 9th Street. Uh, the bulk of our business is Huntington based clients. And uh, so we're, we're here to serve people locally and we're huge herd fans. Now, wait a minute, let me ask you, where did you go to, to college? Yeah, yeah, I went to Marshall. Oh, okay, I thought so, <laughs> I thought so. Yep, uh, it ended up uh, going away for a couple of years, but uh, I came home. So yeah. um, this is home, and I've been here ever since. Uh, huge supporter of Marshall football and all Marshall athletics and Marshall as a whole. I'm excited uh, for what the future holds. And that's how we got hooked up was that uh, the Thundercast with Ignite Link is Ignite Link reached out via message and said, hey, we're following already. They were loving what we were doing, and we just had some ideas, and man, it fit. And it, Fitting is probably the worst word I could use because it's way better than just fitting. <laughs> yeah. Look look at everything that we have going on. Uh, it would not be possible without Ignite Link powering up this uh, this entire thing. It's it's crazy. We had a vision, and as soon as we started talking, Jed's gears started turning. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I can do this. We can do this. Not only could he do it, he could do it better than what we visioned. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, this is surprising to us. We're thankful for this. Uh, when we first envisioned this, it was uh, a little lower quality than uh, than what we're doing right now. And Ignite Link can do this. Jed likes to remind everyone that this is not what he does <laughs> yeah, for not, a living. <laughs> so uh, we're getting the on-the-fly kick-ass setup here. Yeah. And <laughs> so, no, we're not going to tell you how we do it. But right. yeah, just just. Look, I mean, look, you've been watching the feed, you've been watching the show. I mean, this is top notch as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. We're having a great time and they're making this happen. And, uh, you know, we, when he talked about, you, you said, I saw a need and I wanted to fill that need. That's yeah. exactly what we saw. Yeah. We, we saw yeah. a need to provide something extra for herd fans to get the word out more so about all of our athletic programs. And we ran with it. And luckily, yeah. You found us yeah, early. I saw a, uh, a, it was a retweet, and I was like, a podcast yeah. on Marshall? Athle like, I, I thought it was just Marshall football at first. Mm -hmm. And then uh, jumped on and started listening to you guys, and I went back. Uh, I think you guys were maybe four or five episodes in. I mean, very early on. I went back to listen from the very beginning, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, man, this is all the Marshall athletics. Yeah, I mean, this, everything. Is, this is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, you know, immediately subscribed, immediately, you know, downloaded every, you know, every podcast every week. And uh, next thing I did is I sent you guys a message. I was like, I don't know how or what we could do to be uh, to work with these guys, but I want to work with these guys. Yeah. yeah. So it's you know worked out. I feel like it's worked out pretty well so far. I think so too. <laughs> and you know what? Here we are, 30-ish, 40 minutes into our segments, so to speak. Yeah. Follow us on Twitter at Thundercast underscore pod. If you're watching yeah. the live show, you found the YouTube channel. Yeah. Go ahead and subscribe to that and hit that post notification bell so you'll know when we drop new videos, when we put new content up, and when we go live again for Thundercast Live, which is something we're planning to do every single home football game yep. for away games. We'll try to work something out if we can, yep. but they will be not at HPT moving forward. We'll be over yep. in the East lot, which is between the stadium and the Chris Klein Athletic Complex broadcasting there. I will most of the time be at my home studio because I'm 880 miles away. Yeah. But still, Thundercast Live is going to happen every single home game this year and hopefully in perpetuity because uh, the setup we have here is, is phenomenal. We couldn't be happier about it. Let's talk about football. All right. All right. One last word on, uh, on that. And the setup is, uh, you know, that's when we were discussing before, I wanted to make sure that we were thinking a little bit of ahead, I mean, a little bit ahead with what we're doing. So, you know, this setup, I, I feel, is only going to grow uh, yeah. from here, and that's and that was what was in mind. Uh, you know, I just want to see this thing uh, <laughs> go big time. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. I mean, I'd yeah. like to yeah. work and do something that I enjoy doing, you yeah. know, instead of going to a job that I have that I have to go to. <laughs> yeah. I digress. 
So football, we talked to Dan, and uh, the question we kind of put him on the spot after we said the player that he's most looking forward to. So let's start first with that, and then we're going to put you on the spot. So oh who's, who's the player that you are most looking forward well, to watching today? Uh, you know, and, and I knew Dan was going to do this. He took Columbia. <laughs> and I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see what he can do. Um, but really, I'm really excited to see what LeBorn can do. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, he comes highly touted. Yeah. Uh, huge transfer. I think he's gonna he's gonna have a big opportunity today to show what he's capable of, and I think it's gonna be pretty exciting. Yeah, we talked about that. Former five-star prospect, committed to Florida State, played there. Uh, now he's here, and all of a sudden, leading up to everything in the spring and the summer. It was, this is Rasheen Ali's team, and now we have, you know, it's pretty hush-hush. Nothing's really out there about it, but all we really know is he won't be out there playing this week. So all of a sudden, Kellen LeBourne goes into RB1 for the opener. Now he really has an opportunity to put something on film and have a big day. He's going to be able to make a name for himself, yeah. and uh, I think we're going to be pleasantly surprised today. Well, I think it's an <laughs> opportunity to hush some doubters, Yeah, you know. And uh, if that doesn't get you motivated as a player, I don't know what does. Having naysayers and doubters, I mean, I get pumped when people tell me, you know, Thundercast isn't going anywhere. Or you guys are – People well, tell you, you that? have a good time. Tell me sure. where they live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's motivating, right? Yeah. And you're like, okay, well, we'll see. Well, so, uh, sorry, go ahead, you No, know, I'm just saying it's the cherry on top. Yeah. It is. You it know, is. I mean, that's not why we do what we do. I mean, I'm in the same boat with Ignite Link. It's not – why I do what I do, but it is nice that, you know, it's that extra little bit of motivation, you know, to say, hey, you know, I'm going to silence you guys. I'll show you what I'm made of. So in our uh, episode two, uh, well, last week on Monday when it dropped, you had mentioned that LeBorn on his social media was just itching and dying for this first little bit of action, and he couldn't wait to get that first hit and everything. So I kind of agree with you. I'm going to agree with everybody on here because uh, any no matter who we say, uh, hey, bring you up here, who are you looking forward to? Because I'm kind of looking forward to all of them. Right. You yeah. know, we've got so many new players that that were brought in, but Laborn, I think, uh, with the opportunity, it was going to be great as a tandem with Ali, but now he has a game to shine in, and I look for a big game out of him today. And we've talked about this before. This is also a great opportunity for Ethan Payne to get out it there is. and do some damage. A bruising guy. I really enjoyed watching him play last year. I just love a hard-nosed guy that would like to run through you. Yeah. You know, I mean, I appreciate the finesse of a finesse back and the shiftiness and shakiness of a back like that, but there's just something about a bruising back that I like a guy that wants to run through you and, and dare you to take them down. And being that he's a local kid from Polka, how do you not love that? West Virginia kids playing West Virginia, you know, true West Virginian Yes. Football, collegiate football. We represent the West Virginia guy, the Absolutely. West Virginia gal. Uh, so it, how do you not love a local standout playing for the herd? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And uh, we've got several of those. I mean, our starting center, Logan Osborne, is yep. from right up the road. Cabell Midland High yep. School, shout so out. We've got, uh, we've got a lot to show you today. Uh, as you can see behind us again, I'll part the ways a little bit and you can see some more people are trickling in. We've got a lot of food, uh, which we cannot wait to get to. Uh, but here in a few minutes, we're gonna take a quick break, uh, 30, 40 minutes, and then we'll be back right around 1230. But uh, stick around with us. And uh, Jed, I'll let you get back over to there. Right, but thank you guys. Before we depart, we told everybody where they could come to us. Where does someone go to Ignite Link? Yep, absolutely. We got our website, ignite.link. We try to make it easier. It's not ignitelink.com, it's ignite.link. Uh, Twitter handles Ignite Link, Facebook Ignite Link. Uh, we try to keep it simple. Um, hit me up, Jed, at ignite.link. If you need my email address, I will respond to you. Um, so, a bunch of ways to get in touch with us. And uh, if you're a small business or know of a small business, uh, medium sized businesses that could use our services, uh, just uh, hit, hit us up. You know, we're, we're happy to help and uh, we offer, I feel, a very, uh, very good, great, and needed service in the area. Yeah, well, we couldn't agree more because we've been partnering with you for a while. And for someone that says, hey, this is not what I do, and we get such a, professional, yeah. <laughs> right? such a professional setup, imagine what he does when it is what he does. So uh, that level of uh, care, I, I can only imagine what Ignite Link does for IT management. But, yep. Jed, we'll let you get back yep. to producing. Thank you guys. Thanks for Absolutely. being on here, and we'll wrap it up here in just a few. Yeah, so I think we should just get to tailgating. we got some people that have rolled in that we need to – 
say hi to, some people we want to see. When we come back for this third segment, it's all going to be about the game. We're going to talk about some Norfolk uh, State players that you need to pay attention to today. We're going to give you our keys to victory. We're going to talk a little bit of, uh, you know, the roster news we alluded to in yeah. segment one. So everything about the game that we're going to bring to you will be in segment three. Stick around with us. We'll be back in about 45 minutes. It's time to go. Well, let's smell the food a little bit. It's almost ready. It's Thundercast Live, baby. We'll be back. Later. Welcome back to another segment of Thundercast Live. And as you can see, we have a guest. And that guest is Stephanie Cook Lewis, who is going into the Hall of Fame today. Stephanie, welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, Stephanie Cook Lewis played both women's soccer and softball here. Stephanie, can you tell us a little bit? I know you might not want to brag about yourself, but any records or anything that the, the fans uh, would like to hear maybe? Um, well, I came here on a scholarship um, with softball, um, got recruited out of California. Um, and so that was my main sport. I was able to play soccer um, with my last year of eligibility. Um, they started a new soccer team, so I got to be part of that, which was pretty cool. Um, I think the record that I hold um, number one in still is games played. So okay. nice. I played, yeah. Uh, yeah, 235 games started wow. and, and played, so that's pretty cool to, to hold that record very, still. Very. <laughs> the Iron Woman of herd yeah. softball. <laughs> Look, yeah. listeners of the Thundercast know we love us some herd softball. Love so, okay. herd softball. Megan and Corey, they're doing a bang up job oh, yes. over there. Yes. We love how they run the program. Dot magic. Dot magic is real. Oh, and yes. a lot of that is because of players like you that put that foundation down and built what we are enjoying today. I mean, these yeah. girls, I'm sure you keep up a little bit. Yes. I mean, how exciting are those girls? Now? Oh, I know, I and, know. And when KD and I were in college, uh, 97 to 2001, uh, or sorry, you were here about eight years longer than eh. that. But, <laughs> uh, yeah. but anyway, when we started, the softball field was not built over here. It was over right next to Towers, yes. and I, my, right down from my dorm. Yes. So tell me a little bit, now that we have Dot Hicks Field here, uh, what do you love about it? Oh, everything. Um, you know, when we played on the old field, uh -huh. it was cool. The location was cool, um, being right there in the middle of campus. But um, it was a little rough, I'm yeah. not going to lie. Yeah. So I think We played it, intramurals on that field. Yeah. We know how rough it was. Yeah, yes. I think it was actually built over, like, um, a junkyard or mm. landfill. So, <laughs> um, you know, we'd always find some interesting things yeah. and, and yeah. have to search the field every day before yeah. we played. So... Um, that field now is beautiful. I would have yeah. loved to play on that field. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, I mean, it's got to be a huge recruiting tool to oh, come yes. and see a beautiful facility beautiful. like that. With plans to do more. To do more, yeah. yeah. They want to make it more user-friendly, more fan-friendly. They oh. want it to be a bigger draw for mm -hmm. Huntington. And, again, we, we could not be more thrilled to have you here with us. Yeah. I mean, this is well, a big thanks, deal for guys. us, right? Yeah. I mean, That's we're cool. two <laughs> chuckleheads that have a podcast. <laughs> And now we're standing next to an MU Athletics Hall of Famer. Yeah. This is a big deal. So thank you for being here. Um, but, you know, you talked about being recruited, coming all the way across the country out of California. Oh, my goodness, I couldn't imagine. But what was it? What, what is it about Marshall? What is it that you, you're like, that's the place for me? Well, um, growing up in California, it's, you know, a ton of people, crowded. Um, I went to a big school. I loved it, but um, I wanted something smaller, something um, more of a hometown feel. And so when um, Coach Burnt recruited me out here, I got to come on a visit and I just, I fell in love with the people and the small school, um, you know, the atmosphere. Everybody is so friendly and mm -hmm. everything to me seemed to revolve around the school. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everybody goes to the games, the football, basketball, everything. And so I just, I loved that about it. And it, it was a true college town. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's what We talk a lot about it being herd family. Herd yeah. family. And that sounds like exactly what you're yes. driving home. Yes. That's, I mean, we, obviously we pride ourselves on that, right? Yes. It's about the yes. people. It's about the university. It's about the players and fans and the connection that we all have together. And it, it never gets old hearing that. Mm -hmm. People say that's what it is. Yeah. It's the small town feel. It's the family yes. atmosphere. A lot of schools advertise that, but I think we deliver that. Yes, you know, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I definitely made the right choice. So. And then I'm sure you're going to get this question, or probably already had this question until you're blue in the face hearing <laughs> this question, but 
what are you most looking forward to this weekend since you're being honored at the, the thing? Is there a certain event or a time like when they announce you on the field or was it a reception? What was it? Well, we had a banquet last night, uh -huh. which was really cool. Um, you know, a lot of great people inducted with me. Um, my first roommate, um, Carrie Hinkle, mm -hmm. um, she, she's inducted as well. And so we got to hang out last night. Um, our coach came. Uh, oh, she wow. lives in Georgia now, and so Coach Louie Burnt came out, and um, Laura McLaurin and, and Jeannie Noble, all those girls, we got together. Um, they came to the banquet. We got together afterwards, and we just reminisced and laughed a lot. <laughs> um, and so that, for me, was pretty special because I haven't um, talked to them besides social media. You know, yeah. we haven't really talked in a, in a while. So, that sounds great. Um, that was probably my favorite. Yeah. And, of course, the football game, you know. Sure. Um, you Well, I'm you got to you gotta top everything off at, at Marshall in the fall with a football game, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're going to have a great view, right? I mean, they're going to have you out there on the field. You're going to get yes. to see that. Yes. That view of all the folks. Yes, they have a suite for us, which oh, is man. cool. They, they have really spoiled us. And yeah. so, That's great. Um, you know, big thanks to all the people involved in that yeah. Hall of Fame work. And it's, so. it's, it's a great weekend all the way around. We talked about the huge men's soccer victory last night over oh, number yes. two ranked Pitt. We got to go there last yeah. night, which was cool. What an uh, electric atmosphere there. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's great. Yeah. That field is amazing. And Yeah, I was going to say yeah. another one of those facilities yes. that you're like, Wow, you know yes. this. If only, if, you know, if, if I only. Know, I know, yeah. but you got to start somewhere and build up, and so, you know, it, it feels good to be part of um, the crew that started the foundation for you softball and, and even soccer. The short time I played there, and so, you know, we could look at all the new stuff and say, well, you know, I helped get there. That's right. You know, I did that. Sense, I helped. So, yeah. It's it's yeah. it's just a great weekend. We're looking forward to yes. a dominating performance on the gridiron, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, we know you're super busy. Thank you so much for making your way over here, yeah. joining us on this segment, uh, letting folks hear your story. Uh, we're all about bringing our fans closer to our athletes, past, present, and even future. Yeah. So thank you for, for spending a little bit of your day yeah. with us. It's incredibly humbling to have a Hall of Famer yes. with us. Yes. It really is. I'm yes. still getting used to that. <laughs> well, but, very but, honored, very honored. I appreciate y'all having me. Please let us not hold you up from this tailgate that's okay. going on behind us, as everyone <laughs> can see. Uh, go enjoy yourself. You deserve it. And uh, we'll catch up with you in a little while. Okay. Thanks, guys. Right. Thank I appreciate it. Thank you so it. much. Yes. Have a Thank great you. weekend. Yeah. All right. So, KD. Wasn't too bad, huh? <laughs> we are uh, still going forward with our uh, uh, football discussion. So, we heard a little bit about everything else that's going on this weekend. And, again, I said – our number one thing that you got to top it off with is football. So let's get back to discussing Norfolk State versus Marshall here today. Yeah, I mean, that's what's going down. That's what everybody's turned out for is the game on the field. The herd home opener, the Norfolk State Spartans are coming to town. Uh, I mentioned in our week one preview, this was a very streaky team last year. Started out with two losses, then ripped off six straight and closed out with three straight losses. So we talked about in the, in the week one preview, the loss of some all-time players, um, their all-time leading passer, mm -hmm. several very productive wide receivers, and they're missing 14 and a half sacks off of the defensive line from a year ago. So it's gonna be a tough test for And, and as State. of right now, w that we know, they still have not named the starting quarterback. I mean, a little bit of gamesmanship there by the head coach, if you wanna call it that, but I got no problem with that. Yeah. I don't see that as a tremendous threat for the herd. Um, we've talked about up and down the roster, it's just mismatch after mismatch for the herd. Uh, Norfolk State has, you know, several key players that Hurt mm -hmm. fans are going to have to look out for. We touched on those guys in the in the week one preview, and if you didn't listen to that show, you can go back here at any time during your tailgating today and listen to that, but we'll bring you up to speed with some of those right now, right? Number one for me has got to be the running back, J.J. Davis, the transfer from Cincinnati. Cincinnati, that's right. He's returning this year after being the leading rusher a year ago. Uh, he's the five foot nine, 172 pound redshirt sophomore, number 15 on the field. So keep your eyeballs on number 15 when Norfolk State is on offense. Very productive back, if I'm not mistaken. He's the conference preseason player of the year, offensive player of the year. So he's good, right? Um, but unfortunately for him, he has to go up against a very 
violent and disruptive her <laughs> defensive line. A nasty, hungry, speedy Marshall linebacking core and a lumber laying secondary for the herd. There's really no weak spot on this herd defense at all. No, there's not. And they even have some depth that they did not have last year with a couple of transfers coming in to shore up that defensive line. And we're talking about big bodies uh, coming in to help that, which uh, was a problem at some times last year, defending the run. Uh, we have a player here today that might be with a starting quarterback that was not even named at game time, and no matter who it would be, would be a true freshman, a redshirt freshman, or a sophomore. Uh, they might be run heavy. I think we will see today a test of these new defensive line, can we stop the run, that sort of thing, King in on J.J. Davis. I mean, it's a good test, right? You got a preseason conference player of the year, offensive player of the year coming out of the, of the MEAC, I believe. So, yeah, it's a great opportunity to see what this defensive line for Marshall can do. Now, it's not entirely fair to say uh, that they were, you know, porous against the, they were decimated along the defensive line towards the end of the season last year. Especially going into the bowl game, they had six, six total defensive, defensive linemen. linemen. That's right. So you gotta take that with a grain of salt. Yeah, they were, they gave up yards at times, but you know, ultimately that's gonna happen. It's. As a Hurt fan, you just want to see it happen fewer and fewer times as the season goes along. We talked about some guys that are going to be returning this year that we expect to be massive impact players along that defensive line. Owen Porter, the Spring Valley product, Kobe Cumberlander, mm -hmm. and a new look interior defensive line. Uh, several additions on the roster, but also guys like Taquan Legs return, mm -hmm. um, Elijah Austin. This Hurt defensive line is dangerous. Yeah, they are, uh, but I think the defense as a whole is dangerous, and I think that we are going to see that be a major strength for Marshall all year long. Uh, you talked about the stout linebacking core. You talked about the defensive backs. Uh, there's, there just seems to be depth at every level, experience, depth, big combination of the two of them because there's some newcomers that are not uh, in the – ones, twos, uh, the first couple of uh, players, but I think that we are going to see with this predicted blowout game, some of those newcomers getting a lot of playing time and we'll get to see a lot of what our defense might look like this year. Offense too, but... I think it goes without saying you're going to see a lot of guys play on defense for a myriad of reasons. Yes. If it's ugly early, yeah. well, there's no need to keep your Eli Neals, your Abraham Bow plans in there, the guys you're going to have to lean on heavily through a very, very stout Sunbelt in-conference schedule, mm -hmm. you're going to need those guys. Yeah. So we know what they can do. We know that they're known entities and, and highly productive players. So you might as well get some of these transfers an opportunity to play, some of these incoming freshmen a chance to play. You know, we know what Stephen Gilmore can do against the pass. We know what Micah Abraham brings to the table. right? So we've got several young defensive backs. They're going to get a chance to shine today. And... You need that, right? This is an opportunity to get some guys a little bit of battle test. So if you got to lean on them later in the season, it's not their first in-game action. They're not as wide-eyed. They're they're more confident. This is a this is an opportunity to build some early season confidence in a lot of those young players, a lot of those newcomers to the herd roster. I mean, let's face it. it the, the, it's a game. This is a game, but uh, the level of mismatch is is abundant. In, in a lot of positions, if not, if not every position. Every position, I would argue that it, it is a mismatch. I can't say that their best player would be a starter for us. Now, I also, you know, I don't see a lot of them. We've we've fair. read read things, so it, it might not be fair to them. But I am also extremely uh, bullish on the the starters that we have. Uh, so, I, how can you argue? A quarterback that you don't even know who it is a couple hours before game time would be better than our starting quarterback when you don't even know him. So, I think a worst case scenario for Norfolk State is you name a starter, and what if that guy doesn't go out and perform, and now all of a sudden you're looking to make a change, and what if that doesn't go right, and now you're like, well, we've got five out of our seven, I believe it was on the roster, was either either a freshman or a redshirt freshman. Huge youth movement there at that position, which we all know is immensely vital to the success of a football team. 
You know, he's the only player on the roster that touches the the outside the center. You know, basically that touches every the ball every offensive play. So it's a tough test for Norfolk State. But look, there's a few other players on the roster that could make some waves today. We talked about their number one and number three receivers. Uh, either exhausting eligibility or just moving on from a year ago. They do return their number two and number four wide receivers in the pass game, along with that good running back in J.J. Davis. So, you know, the, the herd secondary will be tested to a degree, but it's not a, um, it's not a task that's going to be too tall for any of our DBs to take on. But look, for herd fans that are going to be inside the stadium or watching on ESPN3, some other guys you're going to want to look out for for Norfolk State, a couple of wide receivers. Uh, number five wide receiver, Daquan Felton. He's a big body, six foot three, 205 pounds. He was the number two wide receiver last year. Just 28 catches, though, on the year for just under 500 yards and a couple of touchdowns. And then number 10, uh, Tremaine Talbert, a little bit uh, shorter and shiftier of a guy, five foot eight, 183. Uh, the number four wide receiver last year, just 20 catches for just over 400 yards and one touchdown. So through the air, not an overabundance of production from a yardage and touchdown standpoint, but experience nonetheless, uh, a lot of games played nonetheless, but I don't like the combination of new quarterback and you know, limited production from a wide receiver standpoint for them. It le leads me to believe they're going to have to lean heavily on what Davis can do for them, and I just don't know if it's going to be enough. I don't think so either. And again, uh, I've given this prediction several times. I have it at 56 to 14. Maybe that's a little too high. Maybe it's a little too low. You don't know. Uh, but definitely the matchup favors the herd at, at every point in the game. KD, I put Dan on the spot earlier, in particular about Henry Columbia. Yeah. He's named the starter. Yep. Uh, what do you see him doing today? production wise be as specific or as vague as you would like I mean it's really a wild card for me I feel like it is all about what Huff and offensive coordinator Clint Trickett want to do do they want to go out and put on a show for this home field crowd knowing that they won't have another home game for a month or do we just go out and just try to move the ball and if you know points go on the board they go on the board so you could see Columbia come out and toss for 250 yards in the first half and and that be a wrap or you could come out and see him you know not have to pass the ball that much because LeBourne's averaging seven yards a carry very true what do you think about holding back because not showing all your cards because of Notre Dame at Notre Dame next week I'm not even worried about showing our cards to Notre Dame I don't want to show our cards to App State Coastal Carolina Troy uh, Louisiana that's who I want to to keep guessing uh, you go up into South Bend and shock the world, you're going to make national headlines, and it's going to be a big freaking deal, and there's no two ways about it. It's going to be huge for this program. But win or loss, that game doesn't mean jack squat in the Sun Belt standings. Do I want to see a win? Damn right I want to see a win. But I would much rather see a clean slate in the Sun Belt Conference. Yeah, I think that's uh, not something that's hard to argue. Yeah. You know, uh, out-of-conference games – while we still love to cheer on our herd at all times, ultimately they don't really matter except for accumulating wins toward bowl or exciting fan bases and stuff like that. But if we do go up there and shock the world, like you said, instantly you've got new recruiting that could be, uh, you know, everything just kind of opens up to you when that happens. I mean, the herd's on a national radar at that they point. They are. As much love and deserved love as, as our buddies up in Norfolk are getting today in Old Dominion for beating Virginia Tech, Marshall goes to South Bend and beats Notre Dame. People don't talk about that game outside of Norfolk. They're talking about, oh, my gosh, the herd just beat Notre Dame, you know. Yeah. But, look, we've got Norfolk State on the slate today. I you know, know, we can't yeah. look ahead. So the herd's going to be on offense probably more than half of the game. So we need to talk about some defensive players for Norfolk State that could be impactful. Uh, I mentioned their big losses along the defensive line and especially in those impact plays with quarterback sacks. We like what we have brewing along the herd offensive line. We think they're going to be a real weapon now after we started to see the five that were named and the positions they were. So based on what we think they're going to be, 
as a unit. I'm not sure that this uh, defensive line for Norfolk State is going to do much as far as getting to our quarterback. But look, there's going to be tackles made. So they have some star players. They have some productive players returning. Norfolk State's number one and number two tacklers from a year ago are returning to the roster. The impact plays are where they take the hit. The forced fumbles, the interceptions, the quarterback sacks, the, all those type of things are what they have to replace, by and large. The tackles, they're coming back. Um, let's talk about a couple of guys, right? You got a linebacker you got to lead off with. Number 11 on defense, linebacker Tyler Long. Redshirt junior, 5'11", 222 pounder. Leading tackler, 78 tackles last year. A handful of sacks, three, three and a half, or one and a half sacks, and you know, he forced a fumble. So decent in the impact categories, but he's a tackler. And, and if you can make that guy miss, you neutralize that weapon, right? Uh, a defensive back that we have to talk about was the number two tackler on the team, which isn't always a good thing when you're talking about a corner or a safety as your number two tackler. But hey, if that's the brand of ball you play, that's the brand of ball you play. That's RJ Cole's number 28, five foot 10, 193 pound red shirt junior. 56 tackles last year and 20 of those solo. A couple of INTs and a few pass breakups. So the impact plays are there a little bit for him as well, but Across the 11, how many times do I have to say it, Russ? Is their third or fourth DB better than our third or fourth wideout? No, they're not. No. Is their number two, number three linebacker going to be able to close in on Kalon LeBourne? Going to be able to close in on Ethan Payne? Sometimes maybe, but I like our guys' chances more often than not. Same. If I had to put you on the spot again, we're talking about first it was Columbia, now we're going to talk about LeBourne. And feel free to mention other running backs if you want. Yeah. Uh, production from running back today. We talked to Dan about it. We. What What do you see? I, I mean, I see a hundred yard day for Kalon LeBourne, even if he only plays a half, because it's it's one move, and then you got to chase him down. So, even though it's been a few years since he's coming out of high school as a high school prospect. When you're a five-star prospect, you're a five-star prospect, right? That means that you've got what it takes to get it done at the Division I level. And he was productive at Florida State, but now he's here. I think he's re-energized. We've talked about that. I think he's motivated. I think he's ready to quiet a few doubters. As the herd football team drives by in the background, it's getting to be about that time. I mean, the herd has arrived at the Joan. It's about Thunderwalk time. Yeah. If you heard the sirens in the background, that's what that was. That was the escort for the herd about to do the thunder walk. I mean, we're getting close. But I see a 100-yard day for LeBourne. Um, I really, I've said it before, I'm saying it again, I really like the opportunity here for um, Ethan Payne to do something. Mm -hmm. um, if he runs over a guy, I may just fly out of my seat. <laughs> I mean, I love that. I can't get enough hard-nosed football. I love to see those West Virginia kids doing West Virginia things in Kelly Green and White. But you've talked about some of the freshmen in the class. Yes. Huff has talked some about some of the freshmen in the class, maybe having an opportunity today, and uh, that they bring different things to the game, different skill sets. Some are a little more shifty. Some are a little bit more power. Some are a little bit more um, well-rounded, all-purpose type back. So Marshall's just got a really good problem in the running back room right now without, without, without All-American running back Rashina Ali. So yeah. we get that guy back. Lord help defenses. You know, Huff made a, uh, a great remark here over this past week and talked about that going into the last week, I believe it was last year before they broke camp, that Rasheen Ali was third on the depth chart at running back. And he seized an opportunity, and, which he did not relinquish. Yep. You know, and we saw the stats, we saw the performance, we saw the accolades that he had, and he challenged the team that they do the same now in his absence. Someone steps up, someone takes uh, advantage of this opportunity, and there are, before he hopefully comes back, there are some opportunities for multiple running backs to do that and step up. And yeah, I don't think that there will be any kind of a question if he's healthy, if he's ready to go at 100%, that he go, resumes his starting role. I think that that's a given, but you still got these opportunities for these other backs and they can make a name from themselves, maybe make a, a huge leap up the depth chart for next year, that sort of thing. But not only that, you put on film 
you, you're telling your coaches, hey, you can rely on me. Yes. I will take care of the football for you. I will get that hard yard when you need it. Hey, I can run past the defense. I have that game-breaking capability. It's been a long time, really, since I can remember a Marshall backfield that went three, potentially four or five, deep, deep, like deep. So the as bad as losing a player like Rasheen Ali stings, and it stings, no matter how you slice it, 1,400 yards and leading the nation in touchdowns last year, you don't just easily replace that, right? And this will be his team when he returns at 100%. We know that. But you said he's challenging his team to rise up in his absence. If that doesn't scream, I'm a freaking leader, Mm -hmm. then I don't know what does. You you have to love everything about that guy. You just have to. So we want nothing but a speedy, quick, full recovery and return to the team for Rasheen as soon as he can make that happen. I mean, we want him back today. We understand that's not going to happen, but uh, we are behind him. Heard Universe is behind him. Just as long as you come back where you need to be, we'll be here waiting on you. Yeah. Right? So uh, we talk now. Let's go over to wide receivers or tight ends, the receiving core today. Any hot takes or any feelings or things that you might see? I mean, it's kind of like what I said when you asked me about the quarterback. I don't know how I'm going to – what type of offense am I going to see? Are we just going to come out and chuck it deep all the time? Are we going to exploit mismatches? Or are we going to just play it low-key? And if our base stuff works, it works. So will there be opportunities to go down the field? Will there be opportunities to exploit mismatches? Absolutely. I would almost tend to think on every single play there's going to be a mismatch somewhere. And we talk about some of the guys that have come out of nowhere to make a name for themselves and be on that two deep and get the start. Heck, we were already high on Ahmed, Keaton, Gamage, you know, Devin Miller from a tight end position. Coach Huff is talking about uh, Arizona transfer tight end Stacy Marshall as being a guy that could be a real impact player in a term that he called not just a pass catcher, but a willing blocker. And I don't know if you saw that dude's frame, six foot five, two hundred and fifty. He is a big, at large individual. I'm telling you, herd fans, this is this team is built to win. It's all a matter of getting it together and making it work. But to answer your question, I'd like to see a big day from Corey Gamage. I'd like to see him go up and win that 50-50 ball 90% of the time. I'd like to see Talit Keaton catch that seven-yard in route and make a move and race down the sideline. I love that. I love our yard after the catch capability. I know that's a, fan, a favorite of yours too. It is, yes. I just think that sets the stadium into eruption mode. Yes. You catch, it, it's that first move when everybody collectively goes, oh, and you see nothing but green turf in an end zone. Open field, one missed tackle, one juke, one whatever, and then you're off to the races. Yep. Yeah. You get 40 yards worth of cheering. Yeah. I mean, that's the greatest. So Charles Montgomery is one of those that came out of kind of nowhere because, again, you know, practices haven't been open. The reports haven't been like, you know, let's show you all of our cards, that sort of thing. Uh, We did not have him winning a starting role. We talked about this in an earlier segment. What do you see out of him today? I mean, if he's got what it takes to crack that two deep, who am I to question it, right? He must have the goods. So when you have the goods, when you have the skills, the build, the speed, and then you get to line up along some of the other guys that we talked about that are going to have to take some of – they're all taking some of the coverage away from each other. So somebody's going to be freaking open, man. Yeah. Uh, That's why I think we both kind of think it could get ugly early. Yeah. Because it could just be that simple short seven-yard pass that goes to the house or, or, you know, a safety bites on – you know, play fake to LeBorn because he's averaging seven yards a carry. And next thing you know, it's Gamage over the top, Robinson over the top, Montgomery over the top. Talit I mean, Keaton, Shadid Ahmed. I mean, weapon, 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 yeah. weapon. Pick your poison. Yeah. It's a true pick your poison scenario. It's not hyperbole. It's not me being a homer. I mean, if you look at the roster and if you have seen these guys perform, there's no way that you can take the negative approach and just go, ah, I don't think we have it this year. We have it this year. It's just a matter of 
putting it all together, right? Way back in uh, the before the spring game when we were going over positions and concerns, mine, which was not yours, was this wide receiver core, and it had nothing to do with the talent. It had to do with the consistency. Correct. That they would have a big game and then maybe a couple of games where they were not producing much. Gamage uh, didn't have a touchdown until maybe game eight or yeah, nine. It was like nine or ten. It yeah. was wild. So today I'm hoping that we establish quickly – these wide receivers and we get them in a rhythm and everything and we build off this and have more consistency and I think that will do nothing but help newcomer Henry Columbia. So along that same line you could very well see a lot of short passes, a lot of confidence builders, a lot of getting guys in the zone, a lot of all that kind of stuff just to get in the groove of the game. Then, uh, But I would really honestly think I would like nothing more than to see a throwback to the 97 Motor City Bowl with the play fake and then the bomb to Moss. Give me the play fake to LeBourne and the bomb to Gamage or the bomb to Keaton. 80 yards, 75 yards to the house. That number 75 always pops up for the herd in a stat line somewhere. What better than to have it pop up for play one of the Sun Belt era to have it go 75 yards for a touchdown? I mean... This stadium would probably come unglued. I, yeah. I said it in a different yeah. type tweet. We would have to build a roof just so we could <laughs> blow the roof off of the place. All right. So keys to the game this week because we're talking about a predictor of 99.3 from ESPN for yeah. winning is uh, I, I mentioned in a previous episode just – don't massively have turnovers that are the the ones that are the pick sixes, the fumble recoveries, yes. uh, that sort of thing for a scoop and a score. Uh, those uh, interceptions, even if it's not a pick six, which puts them on a short field, yeah. that sort of thing, to where you can shift a 14-point swing with one play. Anything else different than that that you could think of that we need to, I mean, you know, upsets happen. They do happen. But, but it, not today. It does not look like I it. don't think Joan C. Edwards Stadium is primed for an upset today. Uh, I, I don't think many of my keys to victory have changed. I, I talked about in our week one preview, I think mainly the herd just needs to keep it all in front of them. You know, they can give up yards. They're going to give up yards. But – all the yards in the world don't matter if you can't find the end zone or if you can't split the uprights, right? That's it doesn't right. matter. You can have a 1,000 yards of offense. If you can't put a point on the board, chances are you're not going to win. So if they just keep it all in front of them, I, I still firmly believe we could weather, you know, being minus two, minus three in the turnover margin. I don't think Coach Huff would appreciate that. But I think we could weather that. I think we could weather that pick six or, or a scoop and score. It can't be a habit, obviously. Um, I mentioned that. I think the herd just needs to keep chopping wood. You know, if things don't come out and aren't smooth and seamless from the get-go, just keep trying and chopping away until it, it becomes easier and you find your rhythm. You know, we this isn't Notre Dame. You, every drive doesn't have to be maximized in order to win today. Do our coaches and players want every drive maximized? You better believe they yeah. don't. They want to end up in the end zone every single drive. Yes. But it doesn't have to happen to win. So not much has changed for me. Um, I just, I'm just pulling for everybody to come out healthy, you know, keep all the boxes up here that we can check as the season goes along. Because at the end of the day, this is a home opener. This is about the vibe in Huntington, West Virginia. It's about freaking football being back, baby. It's back. It's back. And, I, man, I've been looking forward to this. Before we end this segment, yeah. final thoughts, questions for me, anything that you have before we go back and do a little more tailgating? No. I mean, do you, who's the guy? Okay, I got one. I got one. Okay. Who's the guy that's going to jump out of nowhere that we haven't talked about at all that you're going to go, how did we miss that? Who's that guy, offense, defense, or special teams? That we haven't talked about just today. At right? all. Okay. Uh, we have not mentioned Owen Porter by name more than like a brief, brief mention. Um he could go off yep. today. Uh, he may have those hits that dislodge the ball, and it's a scoop and a score. He may pick it up himself. He may be doing a, the shooter motion after the sack. The six shooter. Yeah, so we uh, we haven't talked about him much. Right here from hometown boy, uh, massive talent. 
what I believe is the quarterback of the defense uh, that uh, at least emotionally, you know, uh, he definitely has his players' backs, that sort of thing. Uh, he could have a massive game yep. against this inferior offense that we may be facing. Yep, he had a great game in that bowl game against Louisiana. A couple of sacks, big impactful plays, and the mismatch that probably exists to a degree along the offensive line versus our defensive line. That's a great pick. Uh, there's a player I'm going to toss out there that has been added to the roster. Yes. Uh, that you have to mention. I don't know if he'll get in the game today or what, but that's safety, DB slash safety, who knows where he'll fit in. Dink Johnson, who's a former four-star prospect, comes over from, I believe, Ole Miss. SEC caliber defensive back. Uh, was not on the roster when we did our secondary breakdown, so – if was that not on the in, roster when we did because uh, the depth chart wasn't that's out right. either. So our latest episode, this just happened the last few days. That's right. Uh, it was alluded to about uh, Vogler uh, being the, the guy that had a little assist with the clearinghouse. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, I'm going to get that speculation hat and put it on right here, <laughs> that this was the player he was talking Could've about. Could have been. Uh, so to me, I think that that is a great – thing that we may see him out here that's a good pick as well yeah I, I can't take credit for that uh that's one of the friends of the show H hit us up on social media and was like hey did you see this and i didn't and he did so uh, appreciate you pointing that out to us and once you want to dive into it a little bit more i was like wow okay this is a nice little surprise but um last thing let's do a score prediction if it has changed you've talked about yours a number of times has anything changed for you? And then we're going to go tailgate a little bit. Nothing has changed for me. I've said it over and over, 56-14. I just hope that I'm underselling that and we hang 70 on them. I would love to see it again. Well, I remember in year one, Coach Huff said, we are who we're going to be no matter if we're up 40 or down 40. That fits in with your thought process. Uh, too many things for me that I need to see go right before I can start getting super, super bullish on scores. So, like, I, nothing has changed for me. Give me the herd 38-10. to 10 in a cruising victory, but, uh, you know, still keeping some cards face down for a while. Um, but we both like an easy herd victory. Week one's here. The opener's here. It's Hall of Fame weekend. We're going to be going into the stadium here in a couple hours, but for right now, let's go tailgate. It's time to get my belly full. Yeah. So, Talk to some friends. If you're over here in the area, please stop by and see us. we got plenty to eat, plenty to drink. Just come over and see us. We're going to close it out in about 45 minutes. We'll be back on before we head over to the game. So stick with us. It's the Thundercast, and we are live. Later. Welcome back to our final segment of Thundercast Live, and we are here. We've been talking about this tailgate food all day. KD's got a plate to show you, and that's not even all of it because we got some burn-ins right here behind us that are still getting taken care of. We're here with Kyle. Kyle is our smoker chef. Kyle, I want you to talk a little bit about what we got here in uh, – kind of how you did this as far as like the time that you put into it well we got here about three o'clock yesterday afternoon and we've been uh we've had the butts on for the pulled pork the brisket's not off yet we've had that on for probably about 3 30 yesterday afternoon smoked through the night had a great time camaraderie amongst brothers that's what it's all about family our herd family and that's what we want to do so bring home bring home the Sun Belt conference championship <laughs> join the big green and everybody can come back and enjoy this with us next year. We're going to be here every year for the first game of the year. We'd like to yep. make it a regular thing. I think we all agree with that. These guys are doing great things amongst bringing the sports out Thank to you. us, doing an awesome job of promoting Marshall University, and I, I support them 100%. Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, I, I, I'm the guy that Russ said, I won't mention a name that hadn't donated in 20 years <laughs> to the Big Green. I'm the guy that did it. That's um, good to hear. Good so, stuff. So I, I, I've actually bought into what they're selling, and I'm part of it, and I'm ready to be here. So it's, it's less about the meat, more about good family, good friends, good brothers. And, and we've gotten to celebrate that this year. And you got plenty of water in that red solo yeah, cup. Mostly, 90%, <laughs> 90%, 90% water for sure. All right, and we, we can't see these burn-ins that are coming off, but I'm telling you, this is what I've been looking forward to here in about five, ten minutes when they're ready. I am going I mean, to tear just into Just look them. at the guy preparing it. You know he likes to eat, <laughs> right? Lambda, lambda, <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, guys, this is the Thundercast. We've been enjoying bringing this tailgating experience to you today. If you're in the area, stop by. You can have some of this. You can have all this around hey, you. Hey, can I help out? 
Hey, no matter if you're at the dot, oh. or you're at the cam, or you happen to be over here at the Joan, if you see us around town and you see the Thundercast, we'll be saying, Go, Go Herd! Herd. <laughs> it's the Thundercast. See you. Later.